Hey there, welcome to my channel. Today I will discuss anti-hyperlipidemic medications pharmacology. All right, let's talk about it. Hyperlipidemia is a medical condition characterized by unusually high blood levels of fat particles known as lipids. These lipids may adhere to arterial walls and limit blood flow, which in turn leads to increasing the risk of stroke or heart attacks. The blood contains three main types of lipids, cholesteroids, triglycerides, and phospholipids. Cholesterol is essential for cell membrane integrity and the generation of bile acid and steroid hormones. Glycerol and three fatty acids combine to form triglycerides, which are a significant energy source that the body may store. Finally, phospholipids function as an emulsifier and represent a significant portion of all cell membranes. These lipids need to be carried throughout the body in a protein capsule known as a lipoprotein since they are insoluble in blood plasma. There are four main forms of lipoproteins. Chylomicron's very low-density lipoprotein, or VLDL, low-density lipoprotein, or LDL, and high-density lipoprotein, or HDL. Chylomicrons are produced from dietary lipids in the gut and primarily consist of triglycerides with a small amount of cholesterol. The liver produces next VLDLs, which are mainly made up of triglycerides and a small quantity of cholesterol compared to chylomicrons. These two lipoproteins function to transport rich in energy triglycerides to all of the body's cells. Once these are secreted into the bloodstream, an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase, which is found on capillary walls, releases the fatty acids, which are then taken up by the tissues. As the triglyceride content decreases, VLDL is converted into LDL, which now has a comparatively higher percentage of cholesterol. The liver requires cholesterol to make bile acids, Therefore, more than half of the circulating LDL is eventually absorbed by the liver. LDL's primary role is to transport cholesterol to cells where it is needed for cell membrane and steroid hormone synthesis. Furthermore, bile acids are essential for normal digestion and absorption of fat-soluble vitamins in the small intestine. Lastly, excess cholesterol is returned to the liver by HDL from peripheral cells. In the liver and small intestine, HDL is primarily made up of protein with small amounts of lipids. The problem at the moment begins from unusually elevated LDL cholesterol levels, which are sometimes referred to as bad cholesterol because they can build up in the innermost layer of the arterial wall and cause atherosclerotic plaques. However, HDL is typically referred to as a good cholesterol since it suppresses LDL oxidation and vascular inflammation in addition to eliminating cholesterol which helps prevent the formation of atherosclerotic lesions. As a result, unusually low levels of HDL can also lead to atherosclerosis. There are many main classes of medications that lower cholesterol. To have a better understanding of how these medications work, let's start with HMG-QOA reductase inhibitors, commonly referred to as statins. We need to look at the liver cell in more detail since it is the site of the rate-limiting steps to convert HMG-QOA into malonic acid a precursor to cholesterol by the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. Statins efficiently lower the concentration of cholesterol in the liver cell by inhibiting this enzyme. Well, as a result of the decreased levels of cholesterol production, liver cells start to make more LDL receptors, which bind and internalize LDL that is circulating in the blood. Lower levels of intracellular cholesterol also result in less VLDL being secreted, which lowers triglyceride levels as well. Finally, statins may increase HDL levels through a few different mechanisms that are now under investigation. Medications like adervastatin, fluvastatin, lovastatin, pravastatin, pravastatin, rosuvastatin, and simvastatin are examples of medications included in this class. Regarding side effects, statins may increase liver enzymes and increase the risk of liver damage in those who are susceptible since they undergo metabolism in the liver. Second, statin use has been observed to cause myopathy and, in rare cases, rhabdomyolysis or the destruction of skeletal muscle. The exact mechanism underlying this is still unknown, but it is believed to be related to the limitation of mevalonate production, which is an important precursor for other compounds that are essential for maintaining the integrity of muscle cells. Additionally, statins may result in gastrointestinal problems such as flatulence. Additionally, using statins is linked to elevated creatine phosphokinase. Keep in mind that pregnant women should avoid it. 
At the end, there are three statins with a short half-life that should be taken at nightfall. Let's now discuss cholesterol absorption inhibitors, another class of medications that lower cholesterol. To fully understand how these medications work, you should understand the basic concepts of cholesterol absorption in the small intestine. Thus, free cholesterol coming from food or bile sources first attaches to the protein NPC11, which is found in the plasma membrane of enterocytes, which are the cells that line the walls of the intestines. Following binding, endocytosis is triggered. During endocytosis, the cholesterol cargo is internalized by the protein complex clathrin ap 2 which functions on the cell membrane. When endocytosis occurs, the cholesterol is released and MPC1L1 returns to the plasma membrane. To prevent MPC1L1 from interacting with the clathrin ap 2 complex, which is required for endocytosis, the cholesterol absorption inhibitor simply binds to MPC1-1. According to this, the liver receives less dietary cholesterol from the intestines, which lowers hepatic cholesterol levels and subsequently increases the amount of LDL cholesterol that is currently cleared from the bloodstream. Only one medication, Ezetimibe, is included in this class. Ezetimibe is a suitable option for people who are intolerant of or unresponsive to statins because of its mild and few side effects. Let's now discuss PCAK9 inhibitors, the next class of medications that lower cholesterol. PCSK9 is the blood circulating enzyme, which attaches to LDL receptors on the surface of liver cells, liver cells and encourages their breakdown. In simpler terms, PCSK9 activity decreases the removal of LDL from the bloodstream. PCSK9 inhibitors are monoclonal antibodies that attach to and inactivate PCSK9. LDL receptors are more available to bind and remove LDL from the bloodstream when PCSK9 is absent, which lowers LDL cholesterol levels. Olirocumab and Evolocumab are two examples of medications that are included in this category. These medications have been associated with a number of adverse effects, including injection site responses, flu-like symptoms, and a few neurocognitive problems. Remember the term cash to easily recall these adverse effects. Now. Let's discuss fibrates, another class of medications that decrease cholesterol. Phenofibrate and gemfibrozil are two medications that belong within this category. Peroxisome proliferator activated receptor alpha is a nuclear transcription receptor that is mostly activated by fibrates. It is present in metabolically active tissues like the liver and adipose tissue. Activation or suppression of specific genes that code for lipid metabolism-related proteins is caused by fibrates binding to PPAR alpha. Triglycerides are removed from circulation and broken down into fatty acids more quickly when lipoprotein lipase is expressed more frequently, which is one of the primary effects of fibrates. Fibrates also reduce the expression of a protein known as apose et inhibits the activity of lipoprotein lipase. Lastly, fibrates additionally increase the expression of the proteins apoAI and apoAIE which are important parts of HDO and increase their concentrations. Fibrates is similar to how statins cause myopathy and rhabdomyolysis, which have been reported, especially in patients with impaired renal function. The exact mechanism of myotoxicity is still unknown, but it is thought to be multifactorial. Also, gastrointestinal disturbances are the most frequent adverse effects. Finally, because fibrates increase the cholesterol content of bile, they may increase the risk of gallstone formation. Let's now discuss another class of medications that lower cholesterol, which includes just one agent, nicotinic acid, commonly referred to as niacin. Thus, unlike statins, niacin acts on adipose tissue by inhibiting hormone-sensitive lipase, an enzyme that breaks down triglycerides into free fatty acids. Normally, the liver utilizes free fatty acids to make its own triglycerides, which become an important component of VLDL. By lowering the amount of free fatty acids that can be transported to the liver, niacin effectively lowers hepatic VLDL synthesis, which in turn lowers LDL levels. Additionally, through a few different methods that are now under investigation, niacin increases HDL levels. Now, one of the most frequent adverse effects is flushing which occurs due to prostaglandin release caused by niacin and resulting in cutaneous vasodilation. Next, niacin may compete with uric acid for renal excretion, increasing the risk of hyperuricemia and gout. Finally, niacin may potentially be harmful to the liver at high enough levels, 
When aspirin is administered before niacin, the flush is reduced. Bile acid sequestrants are the last class of medications that decrease cholesterol. Bile acids are created in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and then excreted into the gut, where they help in the absorption and digestion of lipids. In the small intestine, bile acids and salts that are negatively charged are bound by bile acid sequestrants, which act as ion exchange resins. The resulting insoluble complex prevents bile acids from being reabsorbed and ultimately causes their excretion. Because bile acids are produced from cholesterol, this increase in excretion of bile acids increases the demand for their production. To meet this new demand, liver cells increase the number of LDL receptors on their cells, which attracts more LDL cholesterol. The net effect is a decrease in the amount of circulating LDL. Colcivillum, cholistopol, and cholestyramine are some of the examples of medications in this class. There are some side effects restricted to the GI system, such as nausea, flatulence, and constipation. These agents may also interfere with the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins by decreasing their absorption and by forming insoluble complexes with other medications such as digoxin and warfarin. Finally, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, check back for more. Take care, and good luck with studying.